Hello folks, Quinza Mayor Tom Cook here with our COVID-19 update. Joining me today is no stranger to you, Commissioner Ruth Jones, who's been leading the effort with the health department, working with the state DPH, and I know Ruth, you have the latest stats for Quincy. Uh, maybe you could share those with us. Sure, so the total number of cases today is 647, up 20 from yesterday. Um, the uh, people recovered is 252, and that's out of that 647 and then deaths, total of 59. So we've had seven more deaths, but they've been um, spread out over a few days, not all in one day. And many of those, a big portion of those were from one of the nursing homes. Nursing homes, um, all of the deaths actually were um, older residents who had some underlying issues. So. Yeah. Well, we appreciate the update on sure. that. And of course, we, uh, we know we're in that surge period that the uh, governor has been talking about, the, uh, health commissioner at the state level has been talking about so right. um, and I haven't done any analysis lately but we're hoping that starts to flatten. We, we, I was hoping last weekend we had um, a, a drop a drastic drop in cases and then it started to surge up so I'm I'm optimistic that hopefully we're at that point and we'll start to drop soon. So is some of that because there's more testing being kept? I, I think a lot well. of that yeah. is because there's more testing available and I think the governor had even said that on his uh, press conference today that you're seeing a rise in cases because we, we are doing a lot of testing in Massachusetts. Right. So. so you're in touch on a regular basis, I know, with our state partners and our colleagues uh, at all levels of government. Right. Uh, can you talk a little bit about tracing? Sure. People are hearing about this tracing. Yeah. Uh, maybe you could walk us through that. Sure, and it's the new buzzword, but, but to let people know, the health departments have been contact tracing for years, years and years. So anytime we get a communicable disease case, what we do is we contact the case and we have to- For example, over the years, like TB? Uh, TB, um, even foodborne illnesses, okay. um, things like salmonella, that type of thing. Um, you contact the case, we get notified by the state, we contact the case, we ask the case who they've been near, um, you know, where they work, uh, who their household contacts are, and depending on what type of disease you're talking about, right. then you you kind of form a circle right. of who might be at risk. And with obviously with COVID-19, respiratory illness, so it's any close contact that they've had um, contact with for more than um, 15 minutes, less than six feet. And obviously household contacts would fit into that depending on what type of work they do, uh, work contacts may fit into that. So we contact the case, we get all the information about the case, when they first got their symptoms, um, when they got their test. Are they co usually cooperative when it comes to this? Um, the, the majority of people are. Some okay. people are very private, don't want us to, uh, to really say, you know, to get into their, right. their details, but most people when they know it's a communicable disease, um, they'll cooperate. Okay. So we do, um, we ask them for a list of their contacts. We then contact the contacts yeah. to let them know they may have been exposed. They have to quarantine. Uh, quarantine, there's all different types of quarantine depending on the situation. Right. Um, we let them know when, when they are um, out of quarantine and we monitor them. So we drop off thermometers, masks, um, and a sheet for them to um, put down their temperature and their symptoms, and then we're calling them a couple of times a week throughout the whole quarantine period to see if they're okay. So, so the whole idea <laughs> that this whole tracing is to get to anybody that may have had contact to keep it minimal so it's not continuing to spread. E exactly, yeah. and if yeah. somebody does start to have symptoms, to try to nip it in the bud right when they have symptoms, get them tested, um, and, in, and especially important in a work situation yeah. because we wanna make sure it doesn't spread to a work situation. Okay. Well, I know uh, you've been busy and your staff's been busy. We have. We appreciate that. You getting many calls on the hotline? Um, I can't, I don't really can't monitor the hotline because it's a separate, um, a separate phone, but I know people are calling it because yep. people have said they're calling it. Okay. We get, we're getting a lot of in-person calls um, throughout the day. People have questions, um, you know, we're happy to talk with them and answer the questions. So 617-376-1288 so. is the hotline. Right. And 617-376-1272 is the office line if people Absolutely. have any questions on anything. So. Absolutely. Ruth, thanks for coming in Thank today. Thank you. I appreciate it. Make sure you take that piece of paper with you when you leave. Don't leave it. I will. Barrel. I uh, will. I take all my junk with me. <laughs> <laughs> thanks for tuning in, folks. Uh, stay safe. Uh, be well. Till next time. God bless.